Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to show that a similar function to the previous one we looked at is also in big theta of n to the 1.5. We'll do this a little quicker. So we begin by looking at the given function. And we're going to show that it is in big O of n to the 1.5. To do that, start with the original function. 6n cubed minus 7n squared plus 3n plus 5 is less than or equal to. We're going to make this bigger and make it look like n cubed in some sense, under the square root that is. How can we do that? Well, we can apply the same tricks for the 3n and the 5 as we did for the previous example. And then for the negative term, negative 7n squared, that's universally negative. So if I get rid of it, I'm getting rid of a negative number and therefore making the entire quantity bigger. So I'm going to do the same sort of thing I did before, 6n cubed, but I'm replacing negative 7n squared with 0. It's negative for all values of n, or it could be 0 when we plug in n equals 0. So I can definitely make it bigger by just replacing it with a 0 plus 3n cubed plus 5n cubed. This equals, collect together my like terms, I have 15n cubed under the radical. Now split it up again. And here, my choice of constant c is going to be radical 15. And the one claim we made that was slightly spurious is that 5 is less than or equal to 5n cubed. That's only true once n is equal to 1 or greater. So we have an n naught here of 1. Now let's proceed and show how it's in big omega. Radical 6n cubed plus 3n plus 5 is in big omega of n to the 1.5. Now we want to make that smaller and make it look like n cubed, but a problem occurs. But my, our trick we had used for big omega in the past was to drop all the positive terms. Negative 7n squared ain't positive last time I checked, so how are we going to deal with that? Well, one trick might be noticing that I will do some scratch work off to the side here. So, note, n squared less than or equal to n cubed, which means if I multiply that inequality by negative 1, I would have negative n squared is greater than or equal to negative n cubed. Then maybe multiply by 7 to make the point really obvious. Negative, negative 7n squared greater than or equal to negative 7n cubed. So that, rather than replacing the rather replacing the negative 7n squared with uh, 0, we're going to replace it with negative 7n cubed. But when we look at this, we might go, wait a minute. If I'm looking a couple of steps ahead, I can see something bad will happen. So, I'm actually going to do this a slightly different way. This looks like it's helpful, but instead, what I can do is not do a 7 on the right-hand side there, but keep the negative. Is that true always? Well, let's find out. Let's divide by negative 1, or multiply by negative 1, however you want to look at it. When we do that, we get 7n squared less than or equal to n cubed. I don't know if that's always true, so let's keep chugging along. I can divide by n squared, which is always positive, so no weird issues happen there with my inequalities. So I get 7 less than or equal to n. Huh, that's kind of convenient. So the first inequality here, negative 7n squared greater than or equal to negative n cubed, is true so long as n is greater than or equal to 7. So let's ignore maybe these first couple of steps that helped us get some inspiration and capture these, move those up. 
That's my little observation I need to justify my steps to myself. We aren't formally showing it if we don't sort of justify our reasoning along the way. So now let's actually write down the inequalities we need. So radical 6n cubed minus 7n squared plus 3n plus 5 is greater than or equal to radical 6 n cubed minus n cubed then plus zero plus zero i'm replacing the three n and the five with zero because that makes it smaller and by replacing the negative seven n squared with negative n cubed i make it smaller so long as n is sufficiently large here sufficiently large happens to mean that it is greater than or equal to seven so this is equal to radical 5n cubed, which is radical 5 times n to the 1.5. Here, my c is radical 5, and my n sub 0 is 7, coming from my scratch work I did on the side to justify some of the inequality facts I was using. So it's in big O, we showed that very easily for this problem. It is in big omega, we took a bit of work here, but because it's in both of those, it must be in big theta. So our final conclusion. So, radical 6n cubed minus 7n squared plus 3n plus 5 is in theta of n to the 1.5. And again, if we wanted to be more meticulous, maybe we would call this constant here C1, this constant here to be C2, and our choice of n naught would be 7 if we wanted to follow directly from the definition. But that's not always necessary. This is always sufficient for our purposes. Showing it is in big O of something and in big omega of the same something means that it is in big theta of that said something.